It is now 10 0 Preliminary business meeting of the 80th Orlando Fire Inspectors. Please stand for the
We will have question time for the 2023. We will have question time for the 2023 uh, Worldcon, and we will deal with business that we did not deal with tomorrow at one o'clock. For now, at least, we will have the past Worldcon chairs photo in this room. There are many of you here. On Monday, should we need it, we will finish off any business that we have not handled yet. I really, really wish we don't need Monday. That's a hint to all of you. <laughs> all right, moving on to today's agenda. We are required to set the time limits for debate. We will go through the items of business one by one. Amendments are in order, but not on any item pending ratification. Those will be listed as pending ratification. Any items referred to a committee today must report back tomorrow. We cannot refer something to a committee to report back next year. Uh, I will, as on the slide, suggest some time limits and ask if there are any objections to those time limits. I'm going to preface this by saying it really goes a lot quicker if there are not objections to the time limits. We can always add time and we can always call a vote earlier if we don't need all the time, but it wastes time to debate time limits. Got it? Good. All right. So. Don, can we get the time limits up on the slide? Is there any trouble you can cite in the end of this? No. Right. So, on constitutional amendments pending ratification, I have suggested a time limit of 20 minutes for E.1, which is the re-ratification of E. Florbus Hugo. Are there any objections? Seeing none, the time limit is set at 20 minutes. I have suggested a time limit of six minutes for 30 days half new business. Are there any objections? Seeing? All right, there is an objection. Are there any other suggestions other than 10 minutes? Point of order for chair. Yes, Cliff, come up to the microphone. Cliff Dunn, he can pronouns. Uh, Mr. Chair, my point of order is that I believe your motion is privileged, and so before we take other suggestions, we vote on your time limit. And then if it fails, we can proceed with uh, the number standing. The point of order is well taken. Yeah. All right, so we're going to vote on six minutes first. If six minutes fails, then we will play fill in the blank. All of those in favor of six minutes, raise your hands. Okay, all those opposed? Six minutes it is. Thank you very much. For E.3, the Statue of Liberty play, I have proposed a time of 12 minutes. Are there any objections? There we go. All right. So we will take a vote on 12 minutes. All those in favor of 12 minutes, please raise your hands. All right. All those opposed? 12 minutes it is. E.4, a matter of days. I have proposed a time of four minutes. Are there any objections? Seeing none, four minutes. And the final one, E.5, non-transferability of voting rights. I have proposed a time of 20 minutes of debate. Are there any objections? Seeing none, 20 minutes it is. Now we'll move on to new constitutional amendments. These are ones that uh, will be passed on to the 2023 Worldcon should they pass this year. For F.1, the 0% solution, 
I have proposed a time of 20 minutes. I see. Yes. There we go. 20 minutes. Are there any objections to 20 minutes? I can. That I can do. They are also in the agendas. If you pick one up, I can. I will. Yes, Mr. Mark. As a quick. Question of privilege, Mr. Chairman, would it be appropriate if members are making any any points to affect, repair any actual speaking, that they should speak into the microphone so that the sound can be picked up by everybody? Yes, I, if they can't get to the microphone and it's quick enough, I will just restate so that the camera can hear it. Cliff, with a privilege. Given the size of the room, for expediency, is there a roving mic? No. 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 <laughs> there is one microphone for everyone in the room that isn't me. <laughs> if you want to use the microphone, sit by the microphone. There are lots of seats by the microphone. <laughs> if you want to chat in the back and play bingo, you can play bingo, but then you cannot use the microphone. Well, you can, but it won't come to you quickly. All right. F.1 is on page 10 of the agenda. It is to strike the entire section of the Constitution that is 3.12.2, which limits the um, no award listing and the end of the list of Hugo Santo. Are there? Yes, the, the PDF online is page 36. It does not align with the printed agenda. We cut. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Uh, is this the point, as these have come up for their debate times, is this the point where motions to object to consideration or postpone indefinitely are in order? Yes, they are. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I did say certain motions are in order. Yes, it bears repeating. All right, so it is page 10 in the little agenda. And if you're looking online or you grabbed one of the big copies, it's page 36. All right. So I have proposed a time of 20 minutes. Are there any objections? Seeing none, it's 20 minutes. F.2, which in the small agenda is on page 12, and also on page 36 in the big agenda, I have proposed a time of 20 minutes. Are there any objections or any motions? Nicholas. Thank you, Chair Nicholas White. Um, Can you state your name for everybody this time? Nicholas White. He him pronouns. Um, Chair, I, I note that F1 would delete uh, 3.12.2 from the Constitution, whereas F2 would amend it. Do I take it that if F1 should pass, that we will no longer be considering F2, or will we just amend F2 and let the amendment kind of float there in is, space? Is the member making a motion to amend the agenda to take up F.2 first, such that we amend? No. No? I'm asking for clarification. Is there any member who wishes to make a motion to take up F.2 first and amend as much as we can, and then if we don't amend? Yes. Yeah. Ke Kevin has moved as such. Yeah. Is there a second? Yeah. Yeah. 
All those in favor of reordering the agenda such that F.2 comes before F.1, and we will play around with the text as much as we can before we decide if we're going to delete it totally. <laughs> All those in favor, please raise your hands. All those opposed? The eyes have it, so F.2 will come before F.1 when we get to the F section of the agenda. Hopefully tomorrow, but probably not. Yes, I know, we still need to do time limits. I have proposed a time of 20 minutes. Is there any objection? Seeing none, 20 minutes. For F.3, if a tree falls in the woods and nobody is around, yes, it makes the sound. I work for the National Science Foundation. <laughs> that is on page 12 in the shortened agenda and page 36 in the full agenda. I have proposed a time of 20 minutes. Is there any objection? Seeing none, it's 20 minutes. For F.4, best game or interactive work, which is on page 13 in the shortened agenda and 37 in the full agenda, I have proposed a time of 30 minutes. Is there any objection? Seeing none, 30 minutes. For F.5, fan versus pro, which is on page 15 in the shortened agenda and 39 in the full agenda, I have proposed a time. Yes, Terry. My name is Terry Neal, she, her. I move that we postpone this indefinitely. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, now I have to go remember. It is debatable gets an automatic time limit of four minutes and will require a two-thirds vote in favor of postponing indefinitely. Yes, as the maker of the motion, Terry, you get to speak first. I want to, before I say this, commend the Hugo Award Study Committee. They did a lot of hard work, and I think they need to do some more hard work on this motion. I don't think it makes sense. I think it should be killed and worked on again. Miss Cliff, I assume you're speaking against the motion to postpone indefinitely? Mr. Chair, when the Hugo Study Committee delivers its report at some point today, we will note that we uh, introduced a Can the speaker pause for a second and state his name and pronouns. Uh, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Uh, you'll be hearing that a lot, I suspect. <laughs> um, item C1 is what we are hoping to bring this up under, uh, the business be being feedback, making business being feedback possible. The Hugo Study Committee explicitly wanted the business being to offer feedback on this item. At this point, aside from the known interaction with semi prosy we are well aware of that. Um, but we, we were hoping to get feedback from the business meeting before proceeding rather than continuing without said feedback. That's the main reason we would like to bring it up. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor of the motion to postpone indefinitely? Dave. Dave McCarty, he, him. Um, I commend the, uh, the study committee for wanting to get the feedback. I think that's the right process. However, I think that trying to get that feedback and get something perfected inside of this business meeting uh, with everything else that's on the agenda is probably a losing proposition. And I pr would prefer that we postpone th this measure and work on perfecting it with the committee. Is there anyone else? Josh, you are. Joshua Cronengold, he, him. So I wrote the motion that we're currently debating postponing indefinitely. And the reason it's written as it is, is that we had 
grave difficulties um, resolving quite a number of issues that may not align with with the whole. As such, if we don't talk about it here, when are we going to get direction from WISPIS so that we can align the committee with WISPIS? We're going to be amending, we're going to be moving to discuss it without coming up with a final decision and sending it back to the committee with a direction. We don't have to perfect it today, but if we postpone it, then we're going to be in the same state we were this year where the committee is not sure that our direction matches with this is all. Is the person raising their hand wishing to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? I don't know your name, so I'm just going to call you a person. Here. KJ, capital K, capital J, she, her pronouns. Um, I would suggest that the Lysis business meeting is not actually the appropriate venue for having this discussion. This meeting is not very accessible to people. You have to be able to come to Worldcon in person, which not is a, you know, there's a whole lot of reasons why many people who would be affected by this motion are not able to do that. I think that there are much better ways for the Hugo Study Committee to outreach to artists and others who am and some pro and zine publishers than at this business meeting. I'm going to ask the timekeeper for a check. What purpose is the member wishing to speak? Are there any other members wishing to speak against the motion? Yes. How much time is that for? 21 seconds. You have 21 seconds. Elspeth Cohort, she, her. I agree this isn't the right place to talk about it. I think it's the only place, however, for them to get a sense of what's going on. I know more people need to talk about it, but this is the easiest way for them to start. I was going, um, Alex, would you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Sorry, Alex Zach, they, them. Um, I'm very rusty on my rules, but would it be possible to amend the motion to instead of precluding debate entirely, having debate but making the, um, the thing in question, the fan versus pro, something we are not going to vote on? Mr. Chair, no. that is item 3.1. That is, that .1. motion would be out of order. Okay. I will say that should we decide to uh, not postpone this indefinitely and we debate, there is the option to not vote for the motion once we've debated it and allow the committee to come back next year with a new motion or the same motion, whatever they feel like or anybody else feels like because anybody can submit items. Cliff. Mr. Chair, in normal debate, is there such a motion as a motion to refer to committee that this meeting could adopt to send it back to committee? Yes, right now it is out of order because the pending motion is to postpone indefinitely. We could refer this to a committee after we handle that motion to, refer, to report back tomorrow, but that's about all we can do today. For what purpose does the member in the back wish to speak? Move to call the question. Second. It, I believe that time has expired anyways. <laughs> there are 38 seconds on the affirmative side to postpone, and no time left on the uh, other side. Yes. Thank you, Martin, if there is uh, Less than one minute, it is not in order.
Is there anybody else wishing to speak on this motion? Seeing no one, I'm going to put the question to the body. The question is, should for F.5 Fan versus Bro be postponed indefinitely? All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please raise your hands. All right. All those opposed? Yeah. That's less than two-thirds, so I'm not going to do serpent time, even though that would be fun for all of us. <laughs> I'd say that the motion is not postponed indefinitely. Therefore, I have proposed a time of 30 minutes. Is there any objection to 30 minutes? Seeing none, 30 minutes. F.6, which is clearing of the artist categories forever, no, really, we swear at this time, which is on page 16 in the shortened agenda and 40 in the full agenda. For what purpose does the member rise? Uh, I would like to motion to postpone this definitely to Sunday. Second. All right, that is in order. Yes, I just, I'm getting that. The motion is to postpone this item of business definitely until the Sunday session of the meeting. That means that regardless of where it comes in the numerical ordering system, we would not debate it until Sunday. After the other business. Yeah. No, Sunday. It would be, yes, it would be the first item of business after the special item of business, which is site selection. There was a second. For what purpose do you rise, Martin? You wanted to? Martin Pine Keehan, I would like to amend the motion so that it be not before site selection business and also not before consideration of item F.5, whichever comes later, I just to keep things in order if possible. So the, mo the amendment as posed is to postpone F.6 definitely until the Sunday meeting and after F.5, should F.5 not be handled before Sunday? Right. Yes. Is there a second for that motion? Second. Yes. I, I note the camera, so now that there is a second for that, I'm going to pause for just a second while the camera switches out memory cards so that we can keep the recording. Don't anybody move. <laughs> At, yes, and since this doesn't need to be on the recording, every so often because of the recording capacity of the uh, camera, we are going to have to stop so that Lisa can swap out memory cards. So that's what we're doing now and hopefully the next time we'll align with the recess. All right, the motion on the floor is to postpone item F.6 definitely until F.5, but not before Sunday. There, it was seconded. Martin, as the maker of the motion, do you wish to speak in favor? The, the motion to amend, yes. Uh, yes, Marcus Pine, he, him, the amendment is simply to try to keep the agenda in order. If we did not specify that it was prior to F.5, it's my understanding that the item would in fact be the first item of business after site selection. And I think it's easier for everybody if we try to keep things in order. Is there anybody wishing to speak against the motion to postpone definitely until after F.5, till Sunday, but not until after F.5? The motion to amend. Seeing no one, we will take a vote on the motion to amend, and then should, once we're done with that, we're going to take a vote, after some debate, on the original motion. So all of those in favor of amending the motion, raise your hands. All those opposed, raise your hands. The ayes have it. The motion is amended. Now we are going to debate the original motion. 
Kate as the original maker? Yes, as amended. Thank you, Jesse, for keeping me. I did not have a husband. Good morning, my name is Kate Secor. My pronouns are she and her. Uh, this is a motion coming out of the Hugo Study Committee, and the person who was largely responsible for pushing it through is observantly Jewish and would prefer not to have to do business on Saturday. So I would like to post it to Sunday to accommodate that request. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion to postpone definitely? Seeing none, I will put the motion to the body. All those in favor of postponing definitely till Sunday, but not before F.5, raise your hands. All right, all those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion to postpone definitely passes. However, we still have to figure out how much time we're going to debate it on Sunday. <laughs> I have suggested a time of 20 minutes. Is there any objection to 20 minutes? Seeing none, it's 20 minutes. Item F.7, which is one rocket per customer, please, is on page 18, I see. <coughs> Uh, and I have proposed a time of 10 minutes. Terry, for what purpose does the member rise? Uh, yeah, go to the mic. I am Terry Neal, she, her. Um, I move to postpone uh, this motion indefinitely, this item indefinitely. So the motion is to postpone this indefinitely. It has been seconded. Again, this automatically gets a debate time of four minutes and it requires a two-thirds vote in favor. Terry, as the maker of the motion, do you wish to speak in favor? This motion would say that if any tiny short story that somebody wrote at some point won a Hugo and then later they turned it into a series, they could, were not eligible for the Best Hugo Series Award. And I think that's ridiculous and we should not debate it. Is there any member wishing to speak against the motion? Kate. My name is Kate Secor. My pronouns are still she, her. If you will mind. My name is Kate Secor, and my pronouns are she and her. Wow, that is a lot louder. Thank you. Uh, if you go back and look at the original intent of best series. It was to give Hugos to works that are worthy as a series. So this is a cleanup to make sure that works that are capable of winning Hugos are not winning, are not double dipping. So I think it's worth at least talking about whether the, the award in practice has moved away from the original intent of the award as created. Is there any other mo member wishing to speak in favor of the motion? Nicholas. Thank you, Chair. My name is Nicholas Weiss. My pronouns are he, him. And I've been involved with administering the Hugo's for four of the five years, actually five of the six years of best series has been in existence. Um, this resolution will penalise those series that are too popular or too long, too long lasting and will override the wishes of voters while at the same time making administrators' lives much more difficult. This meeting should not waste time considering it. Thank you. Is there any other member wishing to Dave, speak against the motion to postpone indefinitely? Dave McCarty. As Dave McCarty, as another Hugo administrator, opinions vary on what's difficult for us, and I feel otherwise. I also feel very strongly that the idea of a series being on for best novel or something else, and also up for series at the best time, is entirely against the, uh, the, the ethos that we have built into the Hugos. And so I think that this, um, that this amendment is uh, well founded and well needed. I'm going to ask for a time check. In favor of the motion amended 9, against amending 
Are there any other members wishing to speak in favor of the motion to postpone indefinitely? Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Ben. Ben Yellow, he, him. I approve of the spirit of trying to fix this, but I think that this particular solution is much too draconian and we need some sort of a fix. I suspect that this motion should be brought up, debated, and sent off to a committee to come out with somewhat less draconian solutions. That was against the postponement. Is there, I'm gonna go back to in favor, there wasn't anybody, still nobody. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against the motion to postpone indefinitely? Are you rising in the back? I'm rising to support the motion. Oh, then come on down. We're the next contestant on whether we postpone this indefinitely. Yes, you can win a car. My name is Cassie Beach. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I feel that I understand the frustration of those who have proposed this amendment. However, I feel that it is against the spirit of the Hugos to tie the hands of the voters in this fashion. I think that as things settle out, best series is a relatively new uh, category. It still hasn't completely settled out yet. I think we need to give the voters time and it'll be fine. I do not see the need for anything this drastic. Um, if someone wishes to do something a little less draconian, figure out another solution, great. But I think this particular motion is too severe and it, it hinders the uh, will of the voters. Thank you. Cassidy, can you come up and spell your name for the secretary or show her your badge? Right up here. Is there any other member wishing to... Are you wishing to speak against? Okay, I'll take the point of information first and then we'll go to a speech against. Um, are we discussing the time or are we discussing the amendment? We are discussing the motion to postpone indefinitely. Okay, could, could we try not to debate the amendment itself? That is in order as we're deciding whether to postpone indefinitely and the value of the motion is debatable. Yes, we are on against the motion to postpone indefinitely, if I'm correct. How much time have I got? Uh, 31 seconds. Great. Terry Ash, she, her. Um, the point of WISPIS is to write the rules and debate the rules, and the Hugo Study Committee, which I have sat on, we can't keep going without knowing what WISPIS wants, and that's why we need to have this actual debate. All right, is there, how much time do we have left in favor? 21 seconds. Is, come up to the microphone, please. Erica Frank, she, her. I'd like to know, can we amend the motion when it comes up for debate? Yes. yes. Okay, so it can change to allow a time limit for past, um, with your Hugo wins or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Okay. One, if we move, if we get to debate, we can amend as our little heart's desire. <laughs> Are there any other members wishing to speak either in favor or against the motion? Yes, Kate. Uh, 
uh, I am still Kate Secor, my pronouns are still she, her. Would the talk table please provide an explanation of what could be done with this kind of motion should item C1 be approved, which thus allows the concept of debate without a constitutional change motion to be made, and how we might go about converting items such as this one into that kind of debate under that item should it pass? Yes. Yes. So we, we could, if we pass C1, then move to have it take effect immediately. Yes, we would have to move to suspend the rules in passing C1 to have it take effect immediately, and then we could use the provisions outlined in C1 to debate this without requiring passage. Does that make sense to everyone? Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. The question before the body is whether to postpone indefinitely F7. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, raise your hands. All right, all those opposed? The no's have it. The motion is not postponed indefinitely. Now we are back to setting the time for it. I have proposed. Is there a question? And your <coughs> No, that was the time for debate on the motion to postpone it. Doesn't that get counted towards the motion? Yeah. 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 Andrew Adams, he came. I wish to propose a motion to refer this uh, uh, item to committee to report back tomorrow. That is in order. Is there a second? Second. Is there anybody wishing to debate the motion to refer to a committee? Since the committee was not named, I am assuming that the head table gets to appoint the committee. Yeah, I'm going to call it the Hugo Award Study Committee, and Cliff, I'm going to put you in charge of it. Bang. <laughs> I have the gavel. I get that power. For what purpose does the member rise? Come on up to the mic. Carl Fink, he, him. It is it required or advisable to have a purpose for the committee to debate this, to, to discuss before saying report to committee, uh, refer to committee? What is the committee to decide? That would be an amendment to the motion to refer to committee without direct uh, points for the committee. The motion currently stands as just to refer it to a committee and they can do what they want with it. They could come back tomorrow and say, here it is, the same way they had it. If someone wishes to make a motion to amend the motion to refer to committee to have specific instructions, that would be in order. Terry. <laughs> My name is Terry Neal, she, her, and I uh, would like to instruct the committee to talk about striking the um, part of this that says, nor may any series containing an individual installment which is one of you go award of any type in its nominated format. No, I would like the committee to discuss striking that.
starting with Noor, through that period, is what we are going to discuss, instructing the committee to debate and report back tomorrow. Everybody got that? Do I need to? All right. The motion has been made and seconded. Is there any debate on the motion to amend the motion to re Andrew? that they felt they needed feedback from the meeting, they weren't necessarily expecting this to go through without amendments or even to go through this year. I think giving them one specific thing to talk about is too limiting. We should just refer it to the committee, anybody who wishes to put things forward, those who wanted it postponed indef uh, indefinitely, those who want specific things can, uh, brought up, can go to Cliff and join the committee and report back tomorrow. We should just give a committee time to get the feedback that they've asked for. For what purpose does the member in the colorful dragon shirt? Uh, Brave Richards, the Hill, uh, point of order, Mr. Chair. If I'm reading this rules of order motions chart correctly, referred to committee is of higher precedence than modified, modified wording of motion. And therefore, the motion to amend the therefore the motion to amend the motion to refer to committee was out of order. I'm going to ask the parliamentarian to respond to that. Hi there. Uh, so the motion to amend is a little different because uh, as long as the motion being considered is amendable, the motion to amend can always be moved, and it sort of has a variable priority because of that. So the motion to amend was in order by the opinion of the parliamentarian. Ruling is under the chair. All right, so now that that's in order, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of giving specific instructions to... Speaking in favor. Uh, that was against. Speaking in favor, Carrie Ann. Carrie Ann Marie, she, her. Uh, the committee has already been discussing this for like a year, and if we don't give them any guidance, they're going to come back with exactly the same thing. Joshua, a speech against the motion to give specific, specific instruction. I'm going to get that there. Joshua Krungold, he, him. Yes, but this is terrible instruction. Um, the um, we have a general sense from the um, from the room that the motion is too draconian. But the, uh, the guidance in particular is to remove all purpose from this and remove all distinction between F7 and F8, if I remember the numbers right. Yeah. Um, as such, we already have the general idea that we should be less draconian, give the committee its head, and let us come up with a less draconian version of this. Is there anyone? wishing to speak in favor of specific instructions for the committee. Seeing none, is there anybody wish Martin? Martin Pine, he him. If we want to do if we want to make this change, we should just defeat the motion to refer and make the amendment today directly by the business meeting. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of specific instructions? Yeah. And then there was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion? This is still the motion to amend, yes? Sir. Yes. Okay. Joni. <laughs> Joni Grill Dassov, she, her. Thank you, Martin. I don't know about you, but I don't have time for a committee meeting today. Can we please just do it during my I don't have to work hospitality from 10 to 1 tomorrow as original? Thank you. Is there any member wishing to still remaining wishing to speak?
to this motion to amend. Seeing none, I'm going to put the question to the body. The question is, should the motion to refer to committee be amended to give the committee specific instruction to debate the text beginning with NOR and ending with format period? All those in favor of giving specific instruction and amending the motion to refer, please raise your hands. All those opposed, the noes have it. We are back on the original motion to refer without specific instruction to the Hugo Award subcommittee or committee with Cliff as the chair and anybody can join to their little heart's desire. Is there any member wishing to speak on the motion to refer? Yes. Seven, Jean, 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 Jean. Seeing none, I'm going to put the motion to refer to the body. The motion is to refer the F.7 to a committee to report back tomorrow. That committee will be chaired by Cliff and anybody can join such as they want. All those in favor of referring to committee, raise your hands. All right, all those opposed? I'm going to say the no's have it. Okay, moving on. So we're not referring it to a committee. We still have to set debate time. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to find that page. There it is. <laughs> Ten minutes. Mr. Yellow. Ben Yellow, he, him. Uh, following Martin's suggestion uh, that we manage to get this off the table for tomorrow, I move to strike, to amend the motion, which I believe is in order, uh, to strike the from nor through the end of that uh, sentence. As this motion is coming up for first passage and not ratification, that motion is in order. Is there a second to amend the item by strike? Is there any debate on the motion to amend the item by striking between nor and the period? Elspeth. Before, before you speak, there's five minutes total debate time, just so everybody's aware, on the motion to amend the item. Um, Elspeth Kovar, she, her, and I guess, given that the Hugo Committee is very intelligent, they now have an idea of the sense of the meeting, and they may decide to amend their own motion, whatever. Um, by tomorrow, in such a way that will satisfy people. So let's allow debate time tomorrow, because at a guess, this will be dealt with by tomorrow by the committee. All right, that was a speech against the motion to amend. Is there a speech in favor of the motion to amend? Yes. Greg Richards, he, him, pronouns, as chair, replying to the uh, previous speech. I would note that the committee has asked for a sense of what Wispus wishes. This is a meeting of Wispus. If the, this, this amendment passes, it will, give the, it will give the committee a very clear opinion as to what Wispus wants. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against the motion to amend? I saw Kate first. Kate Secor, she, her. I would like to point out that the effect of this amendment is to make F.7 the same as F.8. Not 
for me to decide. Um, is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the motion, Perry Ann? Still Perry Ann Murray, still she, her. Uh, it is similar to F.8, but not identical. Is there anyone wishing to speak against Joshua? Joshua Crown Gold, he, him. If we're going to make it less draconian, there's an obvious way to do it. We just don't count the length of things that have previously won or that are currently nominated against the series. This isn't that, and we shouldn't do it. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the motion to amend? Anyone against? Seeing none. I'm going to restate the motion now. <laughs> yep. Go ahead. Um, again, Elspeth Kovar, she, her. Um, I really do think we should just let the committee take a look at this and come back tomorrow, and they quite possibly will come back with striking it. We voted against that. Ah, I'm sorry. I got it. Back word? I didn't, I wasn't following quite. Thank you. The speaker did not yield. I will make a ruling without being asked for one that the committee as a group of individuals could come back should this not get amended now or if it's amended now tomorrow and propose an amendment just because it's not referred to a committee does not mean they are not members of WISFES. I am going to now put the motion to amend the item to the body the motion is to amend F.7 by striking the text beginning with nor after 3.5.5 going through format period. Is that clear to everyone? All those in favor of amending as such, raise your hand. All right, all those opposed, I'm going to say the no's have it. Now, I propose the time of 10 minutes. <laughs> Is there any objection to, yes. All right, there is an objection. We are going to vote on 10 minutes first. If that fails, we get to play fill in the blank. All those in favor of 10 minutes, raise your hand. All those opposed? I'm going to say the ayes have it. 10 minutes it is. F.8, a work by any other name. I have proposed the time of 20 minutes. Page 18 and 42 in the long version. For what purpose does the member rise? Come on down. Greg Richards, he and pronouns. Uh, as Cheddar, I move to postpone this indefinitely. I see the second. Is there a second? I see a second. All right. As the maker. Speech in favor, again, this is four minutes evenly divided, two-thirds required for passage. Okay. Very briefly, and recapping some of the points made on the motion to postpone the previous um, uh, motion indefinitely, even more so than the previous one, this amendment, if passed, would limit the will of voters and nominators in the Hugo Awards, and therefore I believe it is so obviously wrong that it does not merit further consideration. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion to postpone indefinitely? 
the person in the blue shirt back there. Objections, I think, apply here. But you know, speaking as a member of the committee, I don't think I've heard clear direction. I've heard two or three people mention that they didn't like this, but I don't have a feel of what the overall purpose or the will of the business meeting is. And so that's one reason why I think we should have a discussion of this, regardless of what the result is. Thank you. Is there, a, Mr. Yallo? For what purpose does? I was going to call for a speech in favor. Would you like to make one? Benny Awali him. In the interest of saving time, I would like to point out that we can postpone this indefinitely, and then tomorrow, when F8 comes up, move to amend by substitution the full set of text. So we only have to debate this whole thing once rather than twice and save a lot of time tomorrow. You meant that seven, right? Yeah. Yes. I will repeat, as the deputy has just reminded me, debate does not have to be factual. <laughs> Martin, for what purpose does the member? Martin, thank you. Him, I move the previous question. Second. Is there any objection? Seeing none, the question is to postpone F.8 indefinitely. All those in favor, raise your hands. All right, all those opposed? I'm gonna say the no's have it. All right, the no's have it. I have proposed a time of 20 minutes. Is there any objection to 20 minutes? Seeing none, 20 minutes. Now, on to the standing rules changes. I'm going to ask for, actually, I'm just going to call a recess for 10 minutes. We will resume business at 11 or 16. It is now 11.19, we will be back in order. We are up to the standing rules changes. For C.1, making business meeting feedback possible, I have proposed a time of 10 minutes. There we go. It is page two in the shorter version of the agenda and page 28 if you're searching the PDFs. Is there any objection to 10 minutes? No, but I have a question. A parliamentary inquiry. Okay, there's also an objection. Oh. Kate, what's your parliamentary inquiry? Uh, you're fine. Yeah, I'm getting that. I was wondering if you wanted to take a part. So I am now confused. Uh, my name is Kate, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, the slide that is currently up says these items will be effective this year if passed. The discussion that we had when this was brought up earlier in the meeting said that it was not an effect this year if passed, it was in effect next year if passed. And I would like that to be clarified because now I'm confused about whether things take effect when we pass them or not until the next meeting. That, that is my understanding that they take effect at the end of the business meeting and you can all uh, lash me when we get out of this for making a typo on the slides. So the slides should be 
will take effect at the end of the business meeting should we pass it. Thank you. There is an objection to 10 minutes. All those in favor of 10 minutes as debate time for C.1, raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it, 10 minutes. C.2, if you don't have to print it, neither do we. Page 3 in the short agenda and 29 in the PDF. Is there any objection to 10 minutes of debate time? Seeing none, 10 minutes. We are now done with debate time. We will move into committee reports. We will begin with the Mark Protection Committee. I believe, Kevin, are you giving? Dave Wallace, he, him. Uh, have we set many times for any of the resolutions? I don't recall us doing that. because we can take up resolutions today rather than the other items which we can't do except to amend. Kevin, are you giving the... Well, I was expecting... Uh, Go say, sorry, Kevin Stanley, he, him. Uh, Honorable Chair, I'm Kevin Stanley. I'm Vice Chair of the MPC. I was expecting uh, Chair uh, Joe Van Eckeren to be here, but she's not, so uh, I am uh, apparently here presenting... <laughs> sorry, I'm a little out. I wasn't expecting this. Uh, the Mark Protection Committee's report was listed. Um, I do hope people would actually have read it. I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't. There isn't a lot new this year. We have been doing our jobs, essentially, and we have kept working on these things when, uh, that we do. There have been no significant threats that we are taking up to our marks. Uh, we have, however, we are starting to work on the prospects for registering Lodestar as a mark now that we've adopted it as a permanent award, so it's something we need to look into. And with that, I would yield for any questions, but it would probably be better if you all came to me individually or came to the Mark Protection Committee meeting, which is at 1 o'clock on Monday in, um, how do you pronounce it? It's disabled. Disabled. All right. Seeing no questions. Thank you, sir. Cliff, please. Uh, this is a, uh, I'm to the microphone, Cliff. Cliff Dunn, he, him. I'm reviewing the list of standing rules, and under Rule 1.2, I believe that while the Preliminary business meeting cannot take up constitutional amendments. That has to go to the main meeting. We are permitted to handle standing rules changes at the preliminary business meeting. Could I please request a uh, rule of the chair slash parliamentarian on that? No, it's not what I just said. I'm being told by my deputy, who is smarter than I, and that's why they're there, um, that yes, we can debate standing rules changes. Since we have begun committee reports, I am going to take my executive privilege and say that we will finish committee reports, we will then go to debate on the standing rules changes, and then we will handle resolutions, which includes time setting of resolutions and debating the actual motion, or resolutions. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Great. Nobody had any questions for Kevin. So that means the next item of business is to open up nominations for the Mark Protection Committee. The three members whose terms are ending this year are Joe Van Eckeren, Kevin Stanley, and Ben Gallo. Is there anyone who wishes to nominate anyone else? 
Ryan go first. Uh, Brian is supposed to be him. I wish to nominate Nicholas White to the committee. Nicholas. Nicholas, if you accept, at some point, can you come up and sign the form that says you accept? All right, Nicholas has been added. Is there anyone? Ron. Ron Oaks, he, him. If it is allowed, I wish to self-nominate. It is allowed. Is there a second? Second. Not needed. All right, so we have the three people whose terms are ending. Yes. Harry Ann Lurie, she, her. I do not believe we have actually nominated the members whose terms are ending. Is there a motion to nominate the individual? So moved. Okay, so we have five people now. We have the three people whose terms are ending, Joe Van, Kevin, and Ben. We have Nicholas and we have Rob. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, we're going to close nominations. Those of you who have not filled out nomination acceptances, please do so. The elections for the Mark Protection Committee will occur tomorrow. The next committee is the Nitpicking and Fly Specking Committee. Don has beaten me to the punch. Hi, I'm Donald Eastlake, uh, yeah, I'm chair of the Nitpicking and Flyspecking Committee. So uh, we did a review of the Constitution standing rules and came up with a number of ideas for potential improvements, but uh, perhaps this business meeting was already too crowded with other business, so we're basically deferring those. The only other thing in our report, which I hope you've looked at, is that we uh, documented what the effect would be should E2, 30 days after new business, be ratified that moves the deadlines for new business and things like that from the standing rules into the Constitution. And thus, the standing rules need to be updated, mostly to delete items there and to change the references from some part of the standing rules to other parts to instead be references to the Constitution. I believe the Secretary can do all of that, but we've documented it in our report. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Don? Uh, WorldCom Runner's Guide Editorial Committee, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mike Wilmoth, no preference. Uh, as Chairman of the WorldCom Runner's Guide Committee, I uh, wanted to report that we've made incremental progress again this year. Uh, thanks go out to Linda Denneroff for assistance with updating the content and uh, fixing formatting issues. Uh, I also want to thank Kevin Stanley for being an archive backup for the, uh, uh, the Word documents that are the source of the PDFs that you can find online. And Cheryl Morgan for maintaining the website where the uh, guide is located. Uh, this weekend also made some progress towards a new page regarding North American versus non-North American World Cons, and I've spoken to quite a few past World Con chairs uh, to submit content for the new page, and they've all agreed to do it. So uh, in the very near future, we should have a new page regarding the differences between North American and non-North American World Cons, and get that documented. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Next up is the Folly Committee, the formalization of long list entries. Yes.
going to just take my executive privilege and reappoint everybody that was on the uh, WorldCon Honors Guide Committee to the WorldCon Honors Guide Committee. And if, yes, and, and same for the nitpicking committee. And if anybody wants to join, they're more than welcome. You can contact the chairs. They are Don and Mike, respectively. Okay. Moving on to the Bali Committee. I do not see Mark Olson here. Mr. Chairman, my name is Kent Bloom, and uh, I'm on the Bali Committee, which maintains the long list of world cons and various related activities. Uh, who's been guests of honor and chairman, and locations and all that. Uh, it's published in, I believe, the souvenir book, among other places, so you can find it. Uh, we continue to nitpick away at various minor issues. Um, we have added footnotes, especially regarding the things that have happened in the last two years, which have confused a number of people about who was where and when. Uh, I think it has been an interesting set of um, essentially, I don't want to say irrelevancies, but, but in, inconsequential act, uh, footnotes. Um, and uh, we would wish to continue to do that, so we ask that the business meeting recognize the, the continuing existence of the Folly Committee. Is there a second for the resolution to reform the Folly Committee as it stands? Second. Is there any objection? Seeing none, the committee is reformed for another year. Hugo Awards Study Committee, Cliff. Mr. Chairman, my name is Cliff Dunn. My pronouns are he, him. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody who worked on the committee. It's a substantial number of people who did so, and there was a workmanship effort this year. Well, the last six months, it was a um, we were, you know, we were able to get a lot done and present a lot of things, even though some of the proposals need work. Um, I will note that uh, item uh, C.1 actually grew out of this. It is presented by three of the members of the committee because it would not have been within the committee permit to amend the standing rules. Now, that being said, there were there was obviously some uh, a decent flag at the end of things because we had to bring some items forward that are not quite finished because we need the business meetings feedback and bringing motions forward at the moment is the only way to do that. That being said, because of some poor communications and so forth, it became a much bigger uh, issue than expected. Joshua Cronenbold has carried out a starter SWOT analysis regarding the function of the committee. Um, we're, we weren't quite ready to report anything on that to the business meeting, so we don't have a formal report there. However, one thing we are going to be doing is, since there have been concerns about the committee working only on Discord and this disenfranchised of people who are email only, we have set things up so that people can get Discord Digest sent to their email. We are moving for a uh, more clear process for issuing reports in the run-up to the uh, Worldcon, rather than having everything come out rushing at the end, so that the uh, that fandom as a whole does not feel utterly ambushed. We are uh, moving for a more clear de de definitions of how the subcommittee structure which we've adopted works, so that people who are interested in a given item are able to work on that, and particularly towards the end of the process, they don't get overwhelmed by a sudden uh, influx of outside interest in their item. Uh, we are also set moving for a clear autonomy of subcommittees. I believe the committee has a clear purpose for being, as noted by the number of items that this uh, this meeting is expecting to refer back to committee at, at, to, over the next couple of days. Um, in particular, I would note that, for example, the best audiobook award was uh, suggested last year. This may well turn into a best audio presentation award. That is still in development. We are not proposing that at this time because, quite frankly, it's not ready. However, that is an example of us being able to take a proposal, brought in good faith, wasn't quite ready for prime time, work on it over a year or two, and ultimately bring something before the uh, before the business meeting. Um, let's see, anything else we should mention? Um, we are taking steps to be more inclusive and more transparent, as I mentioned. 
Um, I would, and I would note that as many have said, the business meeting is a less than ideal way to handle a number of things simply because it, it is only people who travel here who can participate. Ideally, this committee will be open and anybody who has an internet connection with, will be able to participate either by email or by Discord. I would ask the chair that if we could uh, continue the committee for another year. Is there a second? Second. Is there any objection to reform it? Nicholas. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name's Nicholas Weiss. My pronouns are he, him. One moment. Oh. The Secretary is currently Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Nicholas. Thank you, Chair. Um, I proposed the creation of the Hugo Award Study Committee back in 2017, and I'm standing here now to recommend that it should be wound up. In five years of existence, it has so far changed two words per constitution, adding the words or comic to the title for the best graphic story category. We have had a global pandemic, as you may have noticed, but that only accounts for two of those five years. There's a bunch of proposed amendments from the committee on this year's agenda. The chair has been very frank about the imperfections of the process that got us there and the imperfections of the amendments. I think that this is a feature setting rather than rather than merely a book. I think that the committee needed to consult more widely with other stakeholders, had the opportunity to do so, and did not. One of the amendments was indeed submitted to this meeting without the consent of the members of the committee itself. If the committee does continue, I'm with the majority of committee members who voted against the, the current leadership continuing. This is not intended as an attack. It is simply that a new and more inclusive and respectful approach is needed. But I'm honestly not convinced that we need the Hugo Award Study Committee to continue at all. The, uh, the existence of such a broad study committee inevitably makes the discussion more siloed. Some of you may feel that it needs another year to prove itself. I say to you again, two words in five years. In the open days, this business meeting would constitute specialized subcommittees to address particular and specific constitutional amendments and report back the following year. Now, any such committee will need to be structurally proactive and inclusive in involving the stakeholders who are not in this room. Bearing that in mind, let us move on to build new structures and leave the old ones behind. Thank you. All right, so the question, Elspeth? Her. Once again, I've gotten confused. Um, the vote is to disband this committee. Howsoever, we can appoint a new Hugo study committee sometime during the business meeting. The current question before the body is whether to reappoint the Hugo Award study committee as currently formed. If, if, if that vote fails, then the committee is not reappointed and it goes away, it goes bye-bye. It is perfectly within the rights and privileges of members to form any committee or group of people they should choose at any point throughout the year and submit business. There are no limits unless except for being a member of the seated world time to submitting business. Should the meeting at some point in the rest of the week decide to accept a resolution to form a different committee, that is also within the powers of the meeting, but that is not guaranteed or not guaranteed. Yes, Mark. Martin Pine, Gingham Parliamentary Inquiry. Would it be in order to amend the motion to direct the, the committee to do any number of things, including but not limited to directing the selection of the, the naming of the chair? 
Yes, the committee already gets to name its chair. That power is within the committee. If the committee decides...
the noes have it. I will note the deputy presiding officer's elation <laughs> at not having to take over the chair. The question now before the body is whether to reform the Hugo Awards Study Committee as it stands, and the committee has all the powers the committee would have normally. Harry Ann. Harry Ann Lurie, she, her, I move to amend uh, the resolution, I guess, uh, to, to instruct, to reform the Hugo Awards Study Committee, but to have them elect a new chair. Which may be the same person, but have them, their first order of business shall be new elected chair. Is there a second? Is there any objection to amending the resolution to reform? All right. Perry Ann, do you wish to speak in favor of? No. What? What is the point of order over there? No. We have to handle this amendment, and then you can make any other amendment that would be in order, such as your heart desires. Mark, do you wish to speak against the motion to amend? That, that, Hold on. It is within the standing rules to request that the recording end at any time. It is within order. Is there a second? Second. Is there any objection to ending the recording for the remainder of the... I'm going to just take some editorial liberty. For the remainder of the discussion regarding reappointment of the Hugo Award Study Committee. All right, all those in favor of turning the cameras off. Uh, point for lunch, for lunch, for uh, what vote is required to pass this motion? but it says executive session and not the vote limit. We are now referring to the book.
Alan Tipper, they, them, them. I, uh, <coughs> so I believe that at, at in the in spirit of debate, it is best as if the cameras remain on for, well, pretty much anything that we debate in this body. Because having it recorded and able to look over at posterity and understand why we made the decisions we did may well be useful in future world accounts. It's that simple. Thank you. Is there any else there? Elspeth Cover, she, her. I just wanted to speak against this um, because I think it's reforming a committee is peculiar enough that people who weren't here would, gee, why did this happen? Kate has clearly pointed out that the internet is forever, and I think it is entirely unfair for people's names to be out there um, forever. It's that simple. It, it should not, this should not be done online forever. It, it damaged other people. This sort of thing damaged other people. It should not damage people if we can help it. The chair will remind people seeking recognition that they should wait until the speaker is done as best they can. I'm going to recognize the man in the button-down blue shirt, or the person in the button-down blue shirt in the back. This is a speech against. Uh, my name is Olav Rockney, uh, pronouns he, him, and um, you know, I did a lot of reading and research on the uh, 3.12.2 of the WSFS Constitution this year, and the reason I don't want the cameras turned off is every bit of historical uh, a record we have for these decisions it can be valuable further debates. I mean, we are missing so many records already from, from the debates of this, this body. You know, most of the 70s are a blank slate, and I had to go back to those who actually remember it and try to ask them, what, what, what do you remember from the business meeting in 75? Like, we don't want to leave people with no, no record of why these decisions were made. So I strongly oppose uh, turning on any record-keeping device for these. Ira Alexandra, pronouns they, them. Uh, point of inquiry, if the cameras are turned off, will the secretary continue recording the meeting in written form? Yes. In the back. Is this a speech in favor of turning off the cameras? Yes. After that, while you come up, ask the, uh, wait a minute. Terry Ash, she, her. I'm on this committee, and the discussions at the end got nasty. Um, the minutes will be recorded. This information will exist. It does not need to live on YouTube until the end of time. Perry Ann, for what purpose? You have 20, yeah, you have 20 odd seconds. We have a lot of virtual members, and this is all like a Perry and Marie Sheher. We have a lot of virtual members, and this is their only way of accessing the business meeting since we did not allow them to vote. 
I don't think we should further disenfranchise them. I'm going to put the question to the body. The question is whether or not to turn off the cameras. It is all those in favor of turning off the cameras, please raise your hands. All right, all those opposed? I'm going to say the no's have it. All right, so now we're on the motion to dissolve into the committee of the whole. Martin. That was defeated. That was defeated. Yes. To reform? Oh. Yes. Thank you for someone else to keep track of me. Mr. Chairman, Martin Pine, he, him. I am opposed to the amendment as is in its current form because it gives no direction as to what the committee should do. I believe that it's the responsibility of the business meeting or the chair of the business meeting to name a chairman so that a chairperson so that the committee has there is direction as to committee leadership. I believe the motion is I believe if the amendment is adopted, we will have a the committee will be directionless and leaderless and it will not accomplish anything. I am going to state that we are out of time because all of the debate for the recording bit came out of this. So the question is, for what purpose does the member rise? Mr. Chairman, if this motion passes, uh, Joshua Cronenfeld, he, him. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if this motion passes, uh, who will be the interim chair of the committee uh, uh, on passage prior to such an election? Yes, the first named member on the committee as currently formed. And what is that alphabetical order? <laughs> Kent, I get to, Kent is signaling that I get to appoint that. So, there we go. I will pick somebody. It may be Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All those in favor of giving specific instruction to the committee as it is reformed, we're amending just to give it specific instruction to elect a new chair, raise your hand. All right, all those opposed? I'm going to say the no's have it. We are now still out of time for the motion to refer or to reform the committee. All those in favor of reforming the Hugo Award Study Committee as currently formatted, please raise your hand. All right, all those opposed, I'm going to say the no's have it. The committee is disbanded, and we are going to move on to financial reports. Is there a second? Second. Is there any objection? Restate it. So the motion is to thank the committee members for their efforts. It has been seconded. Is there any objection? Seeing none, the committee is thanked for their efforts, all of the members who have participated over the last five years. <laughs> Moving on to financial reports. Yeah, they didn't do anything because I'm the chair, so I'm just going to say that they go by the way. There's no report for the site selection. Yes. Anyways. Financial reports. I'm going to ask if there are any questions for any committee. Martin. Mr. Chairman, Martin Pine, he, him. I had a question that's kind of both for DISCON and the Chengdu Con relating to a matter in the Chengdu Financial Report. Specifically, there was a statement in the Chengdu Financial Report stating that membership pass along from selection last year didn't appear to have been completed and there was some uncertainty from Chengdu's perspective about what the 
what the totals about the supporting memberships that they that exist at Chengdu from site selection voters. I was just curious, what is going on with that? Mr. Pomerantz, as a representative for DISCON, I assume, he lives in Virginia. John Pomerantz, he, him, uh, legal advisor for DISCON. First, let me apologize that I am not Mary Robinette Coal for so many reasons. <laughs> she was here, she had to leave, because we went a long damn time. The answer to your question is, as you may have imagined, there is a certain amount of complexity in moving funds to a Chinese Worldcon. DISCON is holding the voting fees um, in trust for the Chinese Worldcon, and we expect to be able to transfer the funds to an appropriate entity very soon. Do you want to say something? Mr. Yellow is a representative for Chengdu. Uh, ben Yellow, he, him, co-chair of Chengdu. Uh, we'd like to thank the Discount Corporation Basically, because of the complexities of transferring money across to China, we are in the process of setting up a new corporation which will be based in the United States and will have 501c3 and will then be able to get the money from DISCON as well as certain other funds. Uh, I'd like to thank the DISCON Corporation for all of their assistance in handling all of this, and for the information of everybody else. The new corporation, we have so far just gotten the articles of incorporation and all of the paperwork done, and we will be located in Wyoming. <laughs> what a lovely place. Nick Kate. Thank you. Kate Secor, she, her. While I understand that the funds have not been transferred, has the voter information associated with those funds been transferred? And if not, will it be transferred to the U.S. corporation and governed by U.S. data protection laws or transferred to the Chinese corporation and governed by Chinese data protection laws? As with every Worldcon, the Chengdu Worldcon was given the paper uh, documentation following the balloting in the site selection. Are there any other questions for Cliff? Is this for Discon and Chengdu? Mr. Chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Is there a timeline on when Chengdu expects to be able to reopen supporting memberships for her participation in the Cubas and so forth for, for people who did not participate in site selection last year? Basically, we have much of the code is in place, however, until the credit card facility is in place we will not be able to open it. The paperwork is in process. Uh, we are hoping that the banks will process the paperwork quickly. We do not control banks. However, we have high hopes that it will be done within the next few weeks. As I say, we've submitted paperwork to various organizations and in fact are holding formal meetings with the corporation, of which I am not a member uh, because of various legal reasons. Uh, but informally, I have heard that the paperwork is being very much in process. We hope to have it in the next few weeks. The chair will remind members that there is question time for the 2023 World Cod and that Questions now should relate to the financial report and what was contained therein. Linda. I have a question regarding the microphone. 
What is there any uh, are there any other questions for Chengdu and or Discon? Alright. Linda has a question for Sasquatch. I would, I would like to censure Sasquatch and Mid-Americon for two separate reasons. If you look if, at the financial... Let's, let's start with Sasquatch and That's then. what I'm going to do. If you look at the financial reports for Sasquatch, they have been virtually identical since 2019, if not 2018. They have made no significant contributions of money to fandom. They are saying that they will give $500 scholarship for those who apply for SMOFCON or CONCOMCON. They give no, there is no uh, requirements or explanation of how to apply for such a scholarship, and they do not publicize the scholarship. Therefore, I feel that they should be censured because they are not contributing to greater fandom. There is a motion to censure the committee for Sasquatch for not handling its business and providing funds for uh, scholarships. Is there a second? Second. Is there any objection? I see an objection. All right, I'm going to suggest a time limit of four minutes for debate on this resolution to censure. Seeing no objection is four minutes. I believe, Ben, were you wishing to speak in favor or against? Mike, I assume you were wishing to speak against? I'm going to recognize Mike as first and then. Mike Boynton, Mike Bullmouth again, no preference. As a vice chair of Sasquatch, one of three, I witnessed a lot of discussion after the convention regarding where the excess money should go, because we have a lot of excess money thanks to the controversy that everybody knows about. Uh, we sent a lot of money out shortly after the convention to various groups. Uh, I know personally that $5,000 went to Westercon 70, it was held in Phoenix where I live, and uh, they received the funds, and the International Costumers Guild got a chunk of money, ASPA got a chunk of money. There were a lot of donations made. The specifics regarding what Linda Dinneroff referenced, I don't know about, but I wanted to point out that shortly after Sasquan and prior to the SMOFCON in 2015, lots and lots of money went out to various organizations to benefit Penguin. And it's easy enough to follow up. Uh, the chair of Sasquatch is here, and the uh, finance DH is here, and I will follow up with them to find out what's going on. But to censure for these few things, when Sasquatch did all these things, is really kind of a shot in the foot. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the resolution to censure? Is there anyone remaining wishing to speak against? Kent. 49 seconds. Mr. Chairman, my name is Kent Bloom. I represent, among other things, the uh, Wolfon Heritage Organization, which received a substantial grant from Sasquatch the year after they closed their books. I think that what's happened is that Ennui has taken over and they're just not finishing. But we all know how hard it is to get to the very last part. I don't think that there's enough percentage-wise left in there to warrant a censure, although possibly a kick in the you-know-what. Is there any time remaining against? Two seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to use the last 22 seconds to speak against? Ben. <laughs> ben, ben shut up first, Elspeth. I'm sorry. I know. 
Ben Yalo, he, him. Basically, I think the res a resolution of censure is an extreme measure which should be used incredibly reluctantly. I believe that they have com complied with the Constitution as written, and I do not believe that we should censure somebody for following the Constitution. In the there, tenths of a second over. <laughs> is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the motion to censure? Seeing none, I'm going to put the question. The resolution is resolved. The business meeting censures the SASCON committee for not distributing funds for the benefit of fandom. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All those against, the no's have it. Do you wish to make a motion to censure in America? The, the secretary would like to note that Mid-American did not submit a financial report and requests that they be submit one forthwith at next year. Any other questions for Mr. Dashoff, the old one? Todd Dashoff, he, him. I just have a question specifically to San Antonio and then at the uh, presiding officer maybe can clarify for some of the others. Is this intended to be the last report for San Antonio? It seems like they still have a substantial balance as well. I don't believe, since it did not state that it is intended to be. What the information is up on San Jose, not San Antonio? Yeah. No, Lone Star Con 3, San Antonio. I don't believe so, since it did not state it's the final report, but I am not on the board that presided over Lone Star Con. Is there anybody here who can clarify? No. Okay. We, can, we can follow up with Mr. Shepard later. All right, we are moving on to... I'm going. Kevin Stead. Kevin Stanley, he, him, and, and unless I say otherwise, I'm speaking only personally. Uh, given that we, am I right, um, Mr. Chair, that we are required to adjourn today at 12.30? That is correct. Uh, in light of that, I would suggest that we proceed to try and take up items D1 through D4 only, the new eligibility extensions, after which time I suggest that would be the time, appropriate time to adjourn. <laughs> The deputy uh, presiding officer is going to point out that the chair and the deputy were just about to ask the unanimous consent of the body to do that. The, the member apologizes. You're, you're one step ahead of me. What is the point of information? Be, because programming asked if they could have the room, and we didn't think this would all take that long. So, I'm going to ask unanimous consent to take up D1 through D4 now. Is there any objection? Seeing none, I'm also going to ask unanimous consent to pass D1 and through D4 as a block and just extend Hugo eligibility for all of the works listed. Is there any objection? Seeing none, the resolutions are handled. Right, just D1 through D4. Um, we have 13 minutes left. Move to adjourn. There is a motion to adjourn. There is a second. Is there any objection? We do not. We are authorized to deal with resolutions and standing rules changes at the preliminary business meeting. We do not have to. We will start up tomorrow with D5 and then move to the standing rules changes and then to constitutional amendments. Perry Ann. Sorry, Perry Ann Murray, she heard. Do we not need to set time limits for debate for uh, D5 and D6? Yes. Would the members 
suspend his motion to agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to propose a time limit of four minutes for both D5 and D6. Is there any... Each. each, yes. Is there any objection? Seeing none, four minutes for each. We're now going to go back to the motion to adjourn, which has been seconded. Is there any objection to adjourning? Seeing none, we are adjourned for the day. We are starting.